Shivaya, Om Namah 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 Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya Om Adhikarana 4 Superimposition of the Higher on the Lower With regard to those very instances, another doubt arises. Should the ideas of the Sun, etc., be superimposed on Brahman? Or should the idea of Brahman be superimposed on the sun, etc.? Why should the doubt arise? Because no reason is discernible for these being placed in apposition, with the same case endings. Here we find the word Brahman placed in apposition with the word sun, etc., the same case endings being used in the texts Adityo Brahma, Prano Brahma, Vidyud Brahma, and so on. But this apposition does not quite fit in here on account of the divergent meanings of the words Aditya, Sun, Brahma, Brahman, etc. For there can be no such apposition between a cow and a horse as would be implied in the cow is horse, that is, the cow that is a horse. Objection. Just as clay and a plate made of clay can be placed in apposition, the latter being a modification of the former, so also can be placed Brahman and the sun, etc., they being related as the material cause and its modifications. Doubt. The answer is that it cannot be so, since from such an apposition, meaning identity, with the material cause, the modified thing will lose its individuality, and that will lead to an elimination of symbols, as already pointed out. Moreover, in that case, this will amount to a mere statement about the Supreme Self, so that the scope for meditation will be effaced, and the mention in the Upanishad of a limited, that is, selected, number of modifications of Brahman will be meaningless. Hence, it is a case of superimposing the idea of one thing on another, as in sentences like, the Brahmana is the Vaishvana of fire. That being so, the doubt arises as to what is to be looked upon as what. Opponent. Such being the case, there can be no definite decision, because no scriptural text is in evidence to help a decision. This is how it has to be accepted. Or we can rather decide that the very ideas of the sun, etc., are to be superimposed on Brahman, for it is thus that Brahman becomes adored, that is, meditated upon, by being looked upon as the sun and the rest. And the conclusion of the scripture is that the worship of Brahman is productive of fruits. Hence, the sun and the rest are not to be looked upon as Brahman, but rather Brahman is to be looked upon as these. Vedantin. This being the conclusion, we say, Sutra 5, Brahma drishtir utkarshat. The sun, etc., are to have Brahma drishtihi, the idea of Brahman superimposed on them, utkarshat, because of the consequent exaltation. Translation. The sun, etc., are to be looked upon as Brahman because of the consequent exaltation. The idea of Brahman itself is to be superimposed on the sun and the rest. Why? On account of the exaltation. For thus, the sun and the other things will come to be looked upon as raised in status because of the superimposition on them of an exalted idea. Thus also will be honored the custom in ordinary life, according to which the inferior one is to be fancied as the higher, as is evident in honoring a king's charioteer as the king himself. 
for it will not lead to any good result if the king be lowered in estimation by being looked upon as the charioteer. That should be the method of approach here as well, for a contrary approach will lead to evil. Namaste. So since the sutra talks about superimposition, I thought I'd try a little harmonic superimposition in the lead-in, the intro song. <laughs> so let's revisit this idea of superimposition. Because now it's clear that the order of superimposition matters a lot. So what's the difference, for example, between the sun being superimposed on Brahman and Brahman being superimposed on the sun? Well, superimposition means that one idea is the foreground and the other idea is the background. Another way to say this is one is the context and the other is the content. One is the container and the other is the thing within that container. So when something is superimposed on Brahman, Brahman is the substrate and the thing to be meditated upon is the superimposed idea. I don't know if there's a word for that. But anyway, <clears throat> so when the sun is superimposed on Brahman, we apparently see Brahman in the sun. But what's really happening is that Brahman has become the context and the sun is the content. So the same is true of prana and all the other meditations given in the shastras. For example, the heart space. The heart space is to be seen as Brahman. But what does that mean? That means that the heart space is located in Brahman. See, not the other way around. Not that Brahman will fit in the heart space. There's no room. Huh? The same with the sun and prana and the others. So when we speak of superimposing one thing on another, we are talking about a content being fit within a context. Let's get really clear on that. So now with regard to meditation, what happens is that the object of meditation becomes raised in importance, raised in status, as uh, Purport puts it, by being associated with Brahman, by being the contents of Brahman. See, like what is Brahman? What is in Brahman? What is contained within it? the sun, the universe, <laughs> the planets, the all kinds of energies and different kinds of matter, space, time, everything is contained within Brahma. Brahman is the ultimate context. But when we see the objects of this world, like the sun and so on, as contained within Brahman, it raises their status because now they are connected with Brahman. Now, of course, later on this connection will be removed and Brahman will be seen to have no connection with anything. But that's the final stage. In the beginning, we have to see that everything is connected with Brahman because Brahman is the ultimate cause. Of course, we're talking about Saguna Brahman. We're talking about Shakti, not Shiva. Shiva is aloof. He is removed. He doesn't do anything. He just sits around and meditates. But sometimes when Shakti needs him to be active, she will present him as being active. Huh? But it's really an illusion. She is doing everything because she is the doer. 
He is the being, and she is the action. In other words, Nirguna Brahman is the substance, and Saguna Brahman is the appearance. So we could say that Saguna Brahman is superimposed on Nirguna Brahman, even though they have no actual connection. Why is that? Because Saguna Brahman is illusion, maya. It doesn't really exist. It's just a temporary vision, an imagination, a dream that comes into existence and exists for a while and then goes away when we wake up. So here, waking up is compared to being situated in Saguna Brahman and then realizing Nirguna Brahman from that platform. This is superimposition. Yes. Everything is superimposition. Everything that we perceive because our perception is always changing, isn't it? It's never the same. Even the perception of the same thing can vary according to the time and circumstance. So we can't say that there is any certainty or absolute essence in perception. Only in the perceiver, in the witness, that's Brahman, or rather that is Nirguna Brahman, because it never changes. A mirror may reflect so many images, but the mirror itself doesn't change, only the reflection based on the quality of whatever thing is put in front of the mirror. So consciousness is the same. It never changes although the contents or the objects of consciousness may change in any way whatsoever. Consciousness is always the same. That is why we call it nirguna. Although it appears to have qualities, that appearance is only saguna. Nirguna never changes. So now this is very instructive because we can look at all the things in the world, all the phenomena of the world, as being superimposed as Brahman. That way, nothing is what it seems to be, but there is always a secret hidden within that its existence and qualities are only reflections of Brahman. So, in other words, the entire world is able to be meditated upon as Brahman. And this will yield fruits, as he says. What are these fruits? Well, in the beginning, happiness, freedom from desire, freedom from fear, knowledge, renunciation, happiness because there's no desire anymore. Everything is fulfilled in Brahman. So these lead to the greatest fruit of all, which is enlightenment. And in enlightenment, we let go of the Saguna Brahman. We don't care anymore. The attention is no longer going outward through the senses, but inward towards the self. And when we become situated in the self, when we become rooted in the self and give up our attachment and obsession with these outer senses and their objects, that's when we attain peace. That's when we attain true enlightenment, which is steady and unchanging, no matter the different changes in the world and in the senses, and so on. Because the Nirguna Brahman is the true essence of everything. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya.